Oh lord, that controller is going to drive me crazy. Hi everyone, we are here waiting to be joined by Tequeria's Executive Director. Um, thanks for joining us. We're going to be talking about tech, Latinidad, well not Latinidad, but talking about tech, Latinos, and how Tequeria um, is helping fundraise for undocumented organizations out in California. Um, if you guys could let us know where you're joining us from, that would be wonderful. Um, my <laughs> Hi, Shirley. Nice to, nice to see your face here. I'm going to go ahead and add Tequeria into our live. Give me two seconds. I always feel like such a little old person when I'm trying to add people to our lives. So we've got New York, New Jersey, Indianapolis, Miami. How does it feel out in Miami? Y'all got nice weather out there? Hey, Gloria, Francis. Hey. <laughs> Just gonna. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm I'm kind of tired, but. I'm good. I'm good. How about you? Awesome. I'm good. Um, I'm actually hot. I don't know why I'm hot, but I'm kind of hot right now, which is weird because I'm up north. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm doing good. I'm excited to be chatting with you today. Yeah, super excited as well. Awesome. So I was just talking with folks, you know, um, seeing where people were joining us from today. And some people are joining us from Miami, where it's pretty sunny, Indianapolis, New York, New Jersey. Where are you joining us from today? I usually work and live in San Francisco, but today I am in Norfolk, Virginia with my family. Oh, okay. Nice. And how are you and your family doing during these times? I'll be honest, my brother kind of struggled a little bit. Like, I think he got cabin fever and he just like wasn't having it. Um, I'm kind of like super introverted. So I've actually been okay. But a lot of my more extroverted friends have been like, Oh, my God, how much more can I take of this? And um, yeah, my parents are doing okay, too. But I think it was just like my brother that was hit the hardest, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, I hear that. Um... Well, we're so happy that you've taken some time to chat with us today. Um, and I just wanted to jump right in. Um, and so you are the executive director of Tequeria. Mm -hmm. And could you tell us a little bit about, well, first off, let's introduce ourselves, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, my name is Gloria Malone. I am a contributing writer at bilatina.com. And okay. I'm joined here with Francis. Yes, and I'm Frances. I am currently one of the executive directors of Tequeria, um, and outside of that, I'm also a software engineer at Slack. Okay, girl, I see you. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so what is Tequeria? Yes, so Tequeria is a 501c3 nonprofit that serves the largest community of Latinx in tech across the U.S., um, really, our mission is to provide the resources and support to Latinx professionals to ultimately have them become leaders in the tech industry. Um, as you're probably aware, the tech industry is one of the uh, one of the industries that produces a lot of wealth, you know, across the world and especially in the U.S. And Latinos are one of the fastest growing populations in the U.S. and we're also the largest minority. So I think that combination is like extremely powerful. And I think there's so much potential for us to just like thrive and like lead in this industry that is impacting just, especially now with COVID-19, just so many different people um, in many different ways. Awesome. So what, when were you guys founded? Um, so Tequeria started out as a meetup group back in December, 2015. The first meetup had about three people in attendance, three three Latinx people. So really humble beginnings. Um, and we then, yeah, so we, we kept growing and growing. We launched more chapters. And now in 2020, we have almost 10 active chapters across the US. We have almost 10,000 members or contacts in our CRM. 
and we are officially a 501c3 nonprofit in the US. So we have like, you know, over the course of five years have grown tremendously. And I think that growth is just never going to stop, which is why I think the, the work for me is so fulfilling. You're never going to be bored with like this kind of work, honestly. Awesome. So what I just heard was keep going, right? Wherever you start, just keep going. They went from three people who probably all knew each other and were the organizers of yeah. the meeting to yeah. <laughs> 10 chapters around the country. Um, one of the largest organizations helping support Latinx people um, in tech. And um, I think that's super amazing. Um, and so what are, can you kind of explain some of the, the ways that um, Tequeria is helping people of color and Latinos, you know, understand and get into the field, the tech field? Yeah, so there was this study I was looking at earlier. It was from Payscale, which basically gives you um, the salary ranges for certain roles at certain tech companies. And there was a stat that they shared that between 70 and 85% of jobs are found through networking. And this can seem like super, this can come super naturally to people who are from like a family of professionals who come like from a more privileged background where the network is there, especially if they went to like a really well-known school but for a lot of Latinx and tech, like especially as they're starting out, that network is just not there. And so I think for me personally, the way that I have personally been able to benefit from being part of Tequeria, even just as a member before I got more involved in leadership, um, was through that network. Um, so for context, when I first joined Tequeria, like almost four years ago, I was just a member. I was kind of just passively, you know, being a part of Tequeria's community. Um, and I was interested in a role at Slack and I didn't know anyone at Slack. Um, I was like, you know, I didn't know how to properly network either. I was still early on in my career. Um, but through Tequeria, like I had felt comfortable enough in this community of other professionals with a similar background to me to like reach out to them. And four people responded to like my ask, so, like, Hey, I'm applying to this role. Do you have any advice? And like, they would like, I even got someone to like have a one hour call with me and it was so helpful to me. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of the reason why I was able to do so well in the interview process. And I, you know, eventually got the job. And there's so many stories like that for different Thakidia members of just like finding that community, finding that network, um, which we just don't normally have access to, right? Um, with with yeah. most of us, like there's definitely this thing called like the social capital gap. And a lot of us like face that, especially early on in our career. But even Thakiria definitely is like a solution to that. It's just like being a community where you find that resource and support. That's amazing. So for everyone who's just joining us, we are here talking with Frances Coronel. She's the executive direct one of the executive directors at Thakiria, a nonprofit organization that was founded five years ago, which helps um, kind of demystify what tech is for the Latinx community and helps build out a, um, a networking community so that, like Francis just shared, if you're applying to a job in tech, you're able to ask for people's advice and for, you know, kind of ask them for tips or suggestions on how to really work your resume to be a really competitive applicant for these super savvy and sometimes confusing um, ways on how to get into tech. Um, mm -hmm. So... <laughs> so what do you what would you say are some action items sorry it's you know it's covid and latinos are on whatsapp nonstop. so my mom is sending me all the things y'all i'm sorry oh about God, that <laughs> yeah i i'm i'm peruana and all my like relatives in peru use whatsapp for everything so totally totally fair. yeah my, my WhatsApp has been popping, so y'all will hear that from time to time. I apologize. <laughs> uh, what are some action items that um, you would give to people who are interested in, a, in, in getting a career in tech? What are some things they could do today? Mm -hmm. So this is assuming, I'll, I'll do some assumptions first. So assuming you're just starting out, like you don't have a background, you know, in computer science, you're, you're interested and you know that you're interested in like pursuing a career in tech. Because uh, I think it is important to first, like, kind of experiment with it and see if you're into it. Because I have known people who, like, you know, they really get into it, but then they realize, oh, I actually don't really like this stuff, you know, because tech isn't for everyone. Um, so assuming that's, you know, all out of the way, the first thing I would recommend is actually getting involved with open source. Um, that's something that I did a lot of back when I was starting out. Um, and open source, for those who don't know, it's essentially this way to contribute to code. Um, 
online through like a platform like GitHub and anyone can contribute to it. Anyone can review it and use the code uh, for whatever reason. So it, it's basically like building publicly. Um, and I think the reason that I would recommend doing open source is because you're directly using technologies that are uh, that you're probably going to use on the job, except in a public way. And so you can actually like build up your portfolio of things that you've built, which will really impress the employer um, at the end of the day. Um, another action item I would recommend, and this is of course probably a more biased one, is like joining a community because that can actually really help you feel like not alone. I think like when I was first starting out being Latina and like being part of environments that were mostly like white and Asian men, I just didn't feel like I belonged. And I only joined the area like after about two years of being in tech, you know, like I just, it didn't really occur to me that there were communities out there for people like me, you know? So I just like thought, oh, you know, I'm the lone wolf and I'll just deal with it and it'll be fine, whatever. Um, but there are lots of communities out there that can just like help you feel less alone. And that in itself is just like such a big deal. Um, there was recently this member from Tequeria who told me like, oh my gosh, you know, like I, when I first joined, I was in the introductions channel and I see like 5,000 other like members, a part of that channel and they're all introducing themselves and I feel so connected and it like brought me to tears because I had been, you know, my whole career, it's just like, I'd never seen this kind of community. Um, and that's exactly how I felt. So, um, yeah, definitely. So like open source, joining a community. And I think the other thing, too, is that especially early on, um, this is something that I tried to do as well, is like just try to take advantage of all the free resources out there because there's so many and don't feel obligated to like start paying for stuff, you know, like paying for training, paying for certification or resources. I just don't think that's necessary because there's so much free content online already. So just like try to max that out. And then once you feel like that's been over and done with, then, you know, try, you know, going into that sort of thing. Like boot camps, I also did one back in the day and it was super useful. Awesome. So thank you so much for that. Again, for those who are joining us, we are here speaking with Frances, uh, one of the executive directors of Tequeria, a, non a nonprofit um, that helps build community support uh, for Latinx people who are in tech or who want to get into tech. And so we just asked her, what are three action items that people can take today if they're interested in getting a career in tech? And she shared that um, getting involved with open source like GitHub and contributing your skills to those things is helpful. It'll help you build up your portfolio. She also shared to join a community, right? Uh, Loki, I think it was a personal plug, which is okay. <laughs> uh, and so join Tequeria, join a community of people who um, are where you want to be or are going in the same direction that you want to be in. And so you're not asking people um, for directions who never have been to where you're trying to go, right? And then the third thing is to don't pay for nothing. Don't pay for nothing right away, right? There are tons exactly. of free information on the internet. Um, you can find all types of YouTube videos or, you know, webinars and things like that that can really um, kind of help you test out things, see if tech is really for you, see if you're interested in being a software engineer, if you're interested in being a, a user experience person before you really take a deep dive. So those three things were super helpful. And um, I kind of want to shift gears a little bit um, yeah. because Kiria is huge nonprofit helping Latinos in tech. And then in, on April, in April, you guys officially publicly launched a fundraiser for undocumented people um, to apply to get resources that the federal government wasn't, uh, uh, you know, giving to undocumented people. And so, as we know, we had this low-key, very confusing stimulus package that was rolled mm -hmm. out. Um, there's a lot of trillions and billions mentioned and 1,200 and this and that. And and so people were really confused, but one thing that was really prominent was that undocumented people were not eligible for any of the billions or trillions or 1,200 monies that were being talked about, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so why do uh, an organization that's dedicated to Latinos in tech find it necessary to launch a fundraiser for undocumented people? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when... When I first proposed the idea back in late March, the initial idea for the fund was actually not for undocumented people. It was for Tequeria members who had lost their jobs because of COVID-19. 
And there are still a lot of members who are continuing to lose their jobs. Um, there are members that are struggling to like have basically two full-time jobs now, like taking care of their kids at home and have still maintaining their full-time job. There's just a lot of anxiety, like in this new reality that we're in, you know, it's like, it's a pandemic and none of us have ever gone through this. Um, and so when we were starting to realize all this change within our own community, we wanted to do something. And the fundraising campaign seemed like a good idea. But then one of our members who is also undocumented, also one of our founders is undocumented too, brought up the point that our undocumented members, which we do have a large group of, are the ones that are the most vulnerable and also the ones that are most suffering during this crisis. Um, so we did shift gears and we decided to target a fund towards undocumented members. Uh, one of our partners for the fund in terms of marketing and also helping with distribution of funds is Dreamers in Tech, which specifically like targets um, and serves like DACA and undocumented people in tech. And so we worked closely with Donati Ramos, who is one of the founders of Dreamers in Tech for this fund to like make sure it was like, you know, cognizant of that um, since we don't all have that same experience. Um, so yeah, like honestly, like as we use social distancing to like minimize the risk of it, we just recognize that not everyone is gonna have that privilege. Like as people working in tech, we have a lot of that privilege because we can work remotely. We just need our laptops, like that's it, we're good. Yeah. But like yeah. other people, it's just not the same. And so Tequeria just wanted to get out there and show our support for not just our community members who identify as undocumented, but also beyond the community. And I will tell you, I think I mentioned this to you before too, like our initial fund had the target goal when I first proposed the idea in late March of $4,000. Like that's what we, that's what I thought was realistic at the time. And everyone was like, no, we can do way better than that. And so we increased the initial um, target uh, fund to 15,000. So that's what we did. Where are y'all at now? Tell the people now, where you're now at now. We're at 50,000. We're at 50,000. We're over 50,000. 50,000. 50, she said 50,000, y'all. 50,000. Okay, so she was like, let's just do 4,000, right? And they were like, nah, we could go big, right? We gonna go big. And they're like, okay, <laughs> let's do 15. They're at five zero now, right? Five zero, which is way more than the federal government has given undocumented people. Um, and I just also want to point out, um, I so... Francis, I interviewed Francis for a piece on BeLatina.com, and so a little bit more uh, information about the fundraiser and all of that is in the piece. So you guys can check it out online. Yes, that was a plug. Um, but I also really want to point out that this is super important, not because, like, it's super important because undocumented people pay into our federal government in exactly. many, many ways. <laughs> Right. Mm -hmm. And I hate leading conversations about undocumented communities with the dollar amount because these are humans. Right. These are our mom, our dad, our tias, our sisters, our cousins. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, it's I, but I do want to say that it's about uh, about 14 billion dollars is what undocumented people pay into our federal government. That's mm -hmm. aside from the things that, you know, the jobs that they're working. And so Tequeria mm -hmm. was like, we're going to do something about it. We're going to do four grand. No, we're going to do 15. No, hell no. We're going to do 50,000, y'all. So I think that's amazing. I think it's dope. Um, and my next question, you smashed it. I was going to ask you, what's your goal? And have you made your goal? So the, qu the answer is absolutely. We made our goal and we smashed yes. it. So yes. that's what is possible when community comes together, you know? Um, so what my, another question I have is, some, what are some ways that tech, in the se and I know tech is like, a hu it's a huge sector, right? Yeah. Um, but what are some ways that you think you would like to see tech help marginalized communities even more? Mm -hmm. So I think like being in tech for about five years now, like just working full time, I think like what I would like to see tech companies doing more of is um, just programming and initiatives for like women of color specifically, like that intersectional identity. There is a lot of focus on gender equality, like making sure there are enough women in the workforce of like a lot of these companies, but I think there needs to be more attention uh, put on women of color. Um, if you look at the numbers, it's always been like single digits and it just hasn't really been moving, you know? Um, and I obviously like see that 
in practice, of course, like all the time. I think one thing like that they could do tangibly is like introduce some kind of career coaching model, even for folks who are in the early stages of their career, so that they understand things that they just may not have grasped, Um, you know, like, for context, like both my parents, they're teachers, right? And my teacher, my mom is a teacher at a, at a tier one high school in Norfolk, Virginia. She's a Spanish teacher. And it was just this new reality when I entered Silicon Valley, you know, like it was the, the salary packages are just like super abnormal. And I just wasn't used to that, you know, like being from Virginia. <laughs> And it's like, I was underpaid for such a long time because I just didn't have that context, you know? And at the end of the day, like there are statistics that show we are underpaid like all the time. Um, So I feel like with a a career coach, I I had one for half a year. She also identified as Latina. Shout out to Dr. Christina Villarreal. She was amazing. Um, I feel like having that career coach helped me so much understand my value, the value that I bring to the table that I'm bringing to my company Um, that I just like didn't have a full grasp on beforehand. So I would personally just love to see like more attention being brought on like women of color in computing, because I just don't think there's enough like funding, there's enough initiatives, there's enough programming that are that is helping us. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. So um, for those who are joining us, I am Gloria, I'm from BeLatina.com, and I'm joined here with Frances, who's from Tequeria. She's one of the executive directors. We're chatting about Latinos, tech, and how Tequeria, the nonprofit organization who helps retain, uh, who helps really, you know, create a network of uh, Latinx people in tech, launched a fundraiser for undocumented people, um, and how they smashed their initial goal of 15,000, so that's one five, and now they're at five zero thousand, which is way more than the federal government has given undocumented people. Um, and Francis has also been dropping gems on some things that you could do today to help you get into, get into tech, if that's a sector that you're interested in. And she was just telling us about the ways in which tech can help go a little bit further to uh, not only recruit, but also retain women of color in the roles that they're applying to and that, you know, open uh, jobs that are available in tech. And that looks like career coaching and really having someone who is there for you, um, who will ride for you and making sure that you're not underpaid, right? And so even when you get into these different sectors that are like, you know, exciting and sexy and you see like, you know, some of us make more money than our parents ever did, right? And so <laughs> that, and like, when we see 50,000, sometimes we're like, oh, shit, that's amazing, right? But the person next to you may be making three times that, and you're both doing the same role. So it's really important in all sectors to make sure that you have a career coach and someone who can help you understand um, your, the value that you're bringing to an organization, uh, monetarily, with, through your work, and culturally, because a lot of sectors also, um, they need us, right? They, they don't want to continue to have a very uh, monolithic workforce. And, you know, we have the talent and we're dope all the way around. So we want to make sure that we know that when we're in every sector that we get into. Um, so I guess I didn't know if you had anything else you wanted to share with us. I don't know if folks have any quick questions in the comments before we wrap up. And um, yeah, do you have any other words for us? Any wisdom? Uh, wisdom. Okay. Yeah, I think like, <laughs> I've been talking with a lot of people, like one of the big things that the Gidea does is a lot of, you know, before COVID-19 was a lot of in-person events to bring the community together across our different chapters. And now we've shifted to virtual events. And the conversations I keep having with people is just like, again, like something I pointed out earlier, this is such a new reality for everyone. And I think we really need to have more empathy for situations that people may be dealing with and we just can't see. Uh, Like with my brother, he basically like his mental health suffered a lot. And like, you can't really see that just talking with me or even, you know, virtually. It was a big deal. Like, last week but um so I think like and you know others like I said they are basically like working two full-time jobs being a parent working full-time others have lost their jobs and are just like so anxious to to find a new job and I know I have like gotten an influx of people who are interested in working at flat because they've lost their jobs at other companies um Eventbrite, Yelp like these companies that we think 
are, w would typically do well are just like laying off thousands of people. So this is like a, a really, it's just a new reality for everyone. And I think the, the advice that I would give is to try and have empathy for, you know, your fellow human being out there who just like may be suffering without you knowing it right away. Awesome. Thank you for that. Um, and we have one question from someone. They're wondering if the fund, who's, who is the fund for? So we're saying undocumented people. Is it just people in California? Who can apply to the fund? Or are our applications still open? Yeah, that's a great question. So unfortunately, we had to close applications after receiving almost 700 applications. Um, for context, wow. our team is about 15 volunteers, and only like a few of them were working on the actual distribution and vetting. Um, so that is like, it just, we wanted to maximize our impact because like, honestly, if you look at the numbers, it just doesn't add up even with 50 K, uh, cause most of them were asking for at least a thousand, um, to, to cover rent. And so with that in mind, wanting to maximize impact, we did decide to close applications, but when they were open, they were, um, open to any undocumented individual or family or organization that is um, supporting undocumented individuals and family. That's awesome. I love that you all also op opened it up to organizations as well. Um, so I, does anyone else have any other questions um, for Francis before we wrap up? We're here chatting about um, the fund that they launched. We're talking about Tequeria and how they are helping Latinos network stay and stay in tech. Um, get into tech, stay in tech, you know, change it up a little bit. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we really wanted to, um, and I'm so excited that you took some time to chat with us today. I super appreciate it. Um, do you plan on keeping, do you plan to keep, I think it's raising money. Yeah. Do you plan to keep raising money? Raising money. Yeah. That's actually still being discussed. We're not sure which strategy to take as a 501c3 nonprofit. We want to make sure we're legally and financially compliant when distributing yeah. that's that's super important um so it's not we haven't made a decision yet on whether we're going to continue using, raising funds past the 50k like we've already we're obviously still raising funds but we're not sure whether we're going to close the campaign or just like keep raising funds indefinitely like till we get to like hypothetically 100k right so that that decision hasn't been made yet okay and then we have someone else who asked do you receive donations Yes, we've received um, over 500 unique donations um, from, from donors. Yeah. Awesome. And then someone else asked, post-COVID, are there any plans to support Latinx still in K-12 through or undergrad? So our focus for Tequeria in terms of programming and initiatives is more so on the mid-career uh, Latinx and tech professional because we want to start preparing them to become leaders where they can like make the most impact and create the most change. Uh, but we do have a lot of college level students and uh, in our in our membership and we do partner with high school level organizations that focus on underrepresented people in tech. Awesome. Um, so I d mm. Are we, so I think that um, they're asking if the, and correct me if I'm wrong, they're ask, I believe you're asking if they're, you're still taking applications um, mm -hmm. for the fund at this time after receiving almost 700 uh, requests for, for um, donation, well, requests for funding. Mm -hmm. after, and like, I think it was like five days, right? Like within five days, y'all had yeah. received like 700 applications. They mm -hmm. have closed the applications for funding um, to receive the funding. Um, people, can you tell people how and where they can donate? Yes, um, the link is bit.ly slash TQ dash fund. So bit.ly dash TQ dash fund. Um, and that's our campaign campaign page and you can uh, donate in many different ways through there. Awesome, awesome. So still receiving donations, go ahead, help them continue to smash their goals uh, when it comes to uh, ra raising funds for undocumented people. Uh, right now, the application cycle are closed so that they can maximize, um, but it's still important to, you know, donate to undocumented communities always, and especially now. Um, and so I really wanted to thank you, Francis. Thank you all for joining us. Um, you know, 
if you all have any more questions for Francis, I'm sure you can meet, you can shoot him her away. How would you like folks to reach out to you or to Tequeria? Oh yeah, that's a great question. IG actually works fine for both ways. Um, my IG game is pretty bad. I'm better at LinkedIn, but <laughs> Tequeria like maintains both accounts pretty well. So if you shoot us a message on, through IG, that totally works fine. Um, I'm FBC Productions across all social media platforms. I wanted to be a movie director when I was younger, so that's why it's FBC Productions. And then if Tequeria is Tequeria on social media platforms or Tequeria org. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time, for the work that you all are doing. Thank you all for tuning in, for your questions. I really appreciate it. And stay safe out there. Wash your hands. Social distance. Stay in the house <laughs> so we can probably have a Christmas. I don't think we're going to have a summer. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are not, unfortunately. <laughs> well, gracias, right. Gloria. I really appreciate it. Of course. Have a great day, everyone.